Welcome to chilly Omaha, Nebraska on this Friday night where it is warm inside of DJ Sokol Arena for the Big East matchup between the Xavier Musketeers and the Creighton Blue Jays. Hello everyone, welcome courtside alongside Rob Sims. I am Josh Peterson. Rob, Xavier comes into this one tonight. Three game losing streak on the other side. The Blue Jays, they have lost two in a row, but more importantly perhaps, Jalen Agnew, she is going to miss the second consecutive game. Yeah, front runner for Big East Player of the Year this year. Suffered a concussion at Seton Hall last Friday and then missed that St. John's game on Sunday. They'll be without her again tonight. And that's going to make it tough, especially when you look at what the Xavier Musketeers have in Ari Gray. She has gotten off to a great start this season, and it has continued, Rob, into Big East play where she's averaging now over 20 points per game in conference play. Yeah, she's the league's leading rebounder as well. Coach Mel Moore calls her the most athletic player she has ever coached, and she's coached at a lot of great programs. On the other side for the Blue Jays, Temi Sarda going to have to try to fill that void left by Jalen Agnew, the Big East leading scorer in conference play. Sarda has averaged 20 points per game in her last two home games, and she played all 80 minutes in those two contests. You see the numbers there versus St. John's. That was a team high in the Blue Jays' most recent loss. It is time for the Xavier Musketeers and the Creighton Blue Jays. It's next. Live from Omaha. You're watching Xavier Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Welcome back to DJ Sokol Arena. Alongside Rob Sims, I'm Josh Peterson. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's clash between the 2-16 and 16 Xavier Musketeers and the 12-6 and 6 Creighton Blue Jays. The starting lineups are being introduced right now. So let's take a look at the five that we will see on the floor for each squad. There are the Musketeers starters. Rob, we spent a lot of time talking about Ari Gray in the pregame. It's a really interesting lineup because it is a lot of youth, a lot of freshmen and sophomores, a lot of underclassmen. Yeah, a lot of underclassmen, but that Aaliyah Dunham, the junior, the coach on the floor for Coach Mel Moore, she puts a lot of trust in her, leads the team with four and a half assists per game, and she's 22nd in the nation in assist turnover, so they have a lot of trust in her, but you mentioned it, those underclassmen to complement Dunham and Gray. Yeah, Leah Dunham also leads the team in shooting from beyond the arc, almost 45%, also second in the conference. On the other side for the Creighton Blue Jays, we just mentioned it, Jalen Agnew is out for the second consecutive contest, but Tatum Rembao, Rob, back in the starting lineup for the first time since December, the Blue Jays went four and four with her sideline. Yeah, had a knee injury, you'll see on her left knee there as she's being introduced that brace but missed eight games she started the first 10 games averaging 11 points per game doubling more than doubling her production and the, the other Blue Jays Rachel Saunders really stepped up in Rembao's absence so look for her to continue to be a contributor Olivia Elger the experience there and Gracie Brigley owned to round out those five let's take a look now at the coaches for this contest there's Jim Flannery in his 18th season one win away from 340 wins in his career. Coach Flan for the Blue Jays. It's kind of the exact opposite, Rob, on the other side when you look at Mel Moore. We had a chance to talk to her earlier in the week. She is in her first season. You see her there seated in the middle of your screen. First season as a head coach, she was the associate head coach last year for the Michigan Wolverines. Yeah, I was at Michigan since 2012. Uh, up until getting hired in April at Xavier for her first head coaching job. She's had stops at Princeton, Dayton, Indiana State, and Siena, where she graduated from. So an Ohio native coming home, 
and coaching at Xavier, trying to turn this program, get them back to where they were. This is a program that has a proud tradition, nine NCAA tournaments, two Elite Eight runs in in this century. So it's not like it's, it's long forgotten. It's 2001, 2010 that they made those Elite Eight runs. So this is a program that has a proud tradition, just has slipped a little bit in the last two years. You mentioned it, two and 16 overall, one and six in the Big East, but it's a, a team you and I talked about with, with Coach Flannery too this week. It's a team that you look at two and 16, you cannot just say, oh, it's two and 16, this is, we'll get a win. Because we talked about how good Ari Gray is, how good Aliyah Dunham is. They have some pieces out there. They do have a lot of youth, but it's not a team that's gonna roll over. Coach Mel Moore talked about the love that she has for this team's fight. They fight and they don't give up and they're not gonna back down. And uh, I think Creighton's gonna have their hands full tonight, especially minus Jalen Agnew. Yeah, and Coach Flannery also mentioned, I mean, both games last year, they went down to the wire. Creighton had to come back. And that was a Xavier team that finished two and 16 in conference play. So he is certainly not taking this squad very lightly as action is now underway from DJ Sokol Arena. A late arriving crowd, but it has started to fill up on a very cool night, and a foul will be called there on Sarah Leyendecker, 13 seconds into this one. Yeah, Leyendecker, the Akron transfer, playing in her first season with the Musketeers, trying to hedge out there, and uh, just got her body on. There's Rembau. Rob mentioned the brace on that left knee. Watching her in warm-ups didn't look like it was causing her any problems, but it is certainly big and bulky. Another whistle, 23 seconds into this one. As we take a look at the series history, Blue Jays lead the all-time series 10-2, and including 6-0 and in Omaha. And all 12 of those matchups, Rob, have come since these two teams joined the Big East almost a decade ago already. Shot clock did reset to 20. Here's a three from Saunders. Little long off the iron. Rebound taken in by Aliyah Dunham. Let's see what Dunham does with Rimbau playing defense with that brace. Here's Gray and a travel. And so Gray turns the ball over on her first possession, gives it back to the Blue Jays. Uh, you can see what Creighton was doing there to guard against Gray. The size there doubling. And you see Sarda collapse there along with Saunders and gets the rip away and caused the turnover. Griglione gives it up to Temi Sarda. Sarda driving in, nobody there. And first points are on the board, Jay's up by two. Now you mentioned it, that high screen by Griglione really opened up the lane for Sarda and she took advantage of it. Gross to Gray. And gives it back to Gross. Very gross. Xavier moving the ball around the perimeter. Gross looking in to Liondecker. Gets it right back, and it looked like she almost traveled. And another turnover. A couple of possessions, a couple of turnovers for Xavier. Ball back to the Blue Jays. And not an ideal start for the road team, picking up two fouls on their first defensive possession. And now their first two offensive possessions result in turnovers and have yet to Get a chance up. And the Jays so good. And as I was just about to say, and not turning the ball <laughs> over, Rob. And Elger turns the ball over, but they are one of the best in the entire country. Fewer than 11 per game, second best in the country. On the other side, Xavier has really struggled with those this season. And so that'll be something to watch, those extra possessions that either team is able to get. When I mentioned it in the open that Dunham 22nd in the nation in assist turnover ratio. She's really good. The rest of the team struggles. Nice job there. Aria Gray with a nice drive. Puts it up and it's tied at two. That quick first step got her the space that she needed and able to finish strong. Nice move by Saunders. She decides to give it up to Sarda. Nice pass into Grigley. Oh, what an excellent block there by Ari Gray. Blue Jays are able to get it back. Shot clock did not reset. Rembau loses it. Three seconds left on the shot clock. Puts it up and in and out. And a nice rebound taken in there by Sarah Leyendecker. Nice defense by Xavier to swat the first attempt and cause Creighton to scramble for that attempted buzzer beater at the shot clock. Perhaps even more impressive as the three is put up and in by Aliyah Dunham. And Xavier has an early lead. 
But Rabo is going to say perhaps even more impressive that they kept playing defense after they were able to block that shot and keep the Blue Jays off the scoreboard. Sarda trying to get a screen from Griglione, gives it up to Olivia Elger. She gets it back in front of the Xavier bench. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Here's a three by Sarda. That one is good in the Jays' answer. Three for three, and these are two teams that are, that's a big part of their game. Xavier, third in the conference in three-point percentage out there, shooting almost as good from three-point range as two-point range. Another three falls, this one by Kerry Gross. Shooting 31.3% from beyond the arc, only her sixth make from three this season. Absolutely, uh, not the on the scattering report probably for Creighton. Here's another three-point attempt by Saunders. That one doesn't hit anything, and so Xavier will have the ball up by three as a couple of substitutions are made. Yeah, Carrie Gross has really made a jump in her game. She hit that three-pointer on the last trip down nearly tripling all of her numbers from last year as a freshman into her sophomore season. She averaged three, just over three points last year. Now she's averaging nine and a half points this year, and you can see why with shots like that going down. Blue Jays showed a press for a moment, but they back off. Didi Pryor making her first appearance of the evening, and that pass is a little high, but it was tipped out off of the Blue Jays. And you see Lion Decker playing way out away from the basket, trying to clear that lane for Gray. Give her the go down low. Doesn't shoot it from beyond the arc very often. Only 10 attempts this season for Lion Decker. Deja Ross with her first appearance right now. Here's Gray inside. Nice moves. Puts it up off the glass. Doesn't go in. Rebound taken in by Saunders. Everything but the finish there by Ari Gray. What a savvy post move by the all-conference player. Here's another three. Sort of that one falls, and it's tied again at eight. We mentioned it in the open, too. 19 points at St. John's last Sunday with Agnew out picking up that scoring slack and averaging 20 points per game her last two home games. Nice hands there from Pryor. Almost was able to get it, but Xavier keeps the possession. Nice cut there by Gray, lays it in, and Xavier retakes the lead again. Yeah, Ross with the feed and Gray with the cut. Good teamwork, working for both sides right now. Back and forth, offenses are looking good so far in this one. Michael Parham gives it back to Sarda. Sarda driving in by multiple defenders, and the rebound is taken in by Ari Gray. Gray puts it up. The floater a little short. Rebound taken in by Lion Decker. Nice job. Puts it up off the glass. And Xavier with their largest lead of the first quarter up by four. Yeah, Lion Decker with that size. You see that long frame, six foot four for the Cincinnati native. Nice start by Xavier. You would not think that they're only two and 16 with the way that they're playing so far against the 12 and six Blue Jays. Excellent pass inside to Para, and she lays it in. Well, then you see that miscommunication, and that allows the Blue Jays to get an easy basket as Xavier loses. Mel Moore calls the timeout. More to come when we come back. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
I'm from Chicago. Cleveland. Phoenix. Milwaukee. Harford. Colorado. Oklahoma. Thailand. Norway. Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business. Chemical science. Occupational therapy. Philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. All right, we got to be all in, all in, all right? We got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Trust Arena. Get tickets now. Xavier up 12-10 in Omaha, halfway through the first quarter under first year head coach Mel Moore. See her there on the sidelines. We talked a little bit, Rob, about her past and she has been in a lot of places, but was at Michigan from 2012 until this past spring. And a little bit of a Big East connection there too. Former St. John's coach Kim barnes Rico is who she coached under there and she said, Coach Barnes Rico really allowed her to grow and have a lot of responsibility as an assistant coach and then an associate coach her last year there. Yeah, bright future ahead for Xavier. Here's another three, and that one falls from Temi Sarda, the fifth combined three point shot to go into the net for both of these teams. Well, you, you expected Sarda to, to pick up the slack. You didn't expect her maybe to score 11 points already in the first six minutes of this one. And here is another deep shot. That one hits the arm, but a nice rebound by Sharps. Sharps kicks it out. An excellent pump fake there. A little long, though, from Deja Ross, and the Jays go the other way. Creighton with three freshmen on the floor right now, including Dee Dee Pryor, who has the rock right now. Gives it up to Peyton Brodsky. Sarda over to Carly Batchelor. Pryor drives, lost it for a moment. Nice little fake there by Brodsky, can't get a shot up. Sarda has three seconds on the shot clock. Brodsky for three. And that one banks in. It's late on a Friday night, but the bank is still open. Chase up by four. Well, when the, the shot clock's that low, you don't have a whole lot of options, and you got to throw it up. And she that was a contested three, and I think that's why the arc went so high to try to get it over the contest. Brodsky shooting 30% from beyond the arc this season. Was at 41.5% a year ago. That one falls. Here's a drive and another shot off the glass. This one doesn't go in for Townsend, and Jays go the other way. It's a strong take by Townsend, but also strong defense by the freshman Michael Parham for the Blue Jays. Sarda to Brodsky. Brodsky, another three. On line, but a little short. And Dunham with the rebound and going the other way. I think she should have just tried to bank it again. <laughs> go, go back to back banks. Here's a three from Gray. And that one will hit nothing. And so it goes out of bounds and the Jays will get the ball back. Well, we talked about how much Gray scores and, and 20, better than 20 points per game in Big East play. She's a high volume shooter though. She's gonna take a lot of shots to get those points. And, when she's your, your go, one of your go-to players, you, you learn to live and accept some of those maybe early in the shot clock misses. Gray, two for six on the evening. Brodsky to Parham. Parham with a pump fake. And that one goes off the backboard and into the hand of Lion Decker. And Megan Sh or Morgan Sharps, excuse me, closing in there to help on the defense. Maybe altered that shot by Parham just a little bit. Ari Gray is on the bench. And that pass a little high from Dunham to Liondecker, and another turnover for Xavier. And it goes back to the Blue Jays. Yeah, having a hard time taking care of that ball. 
are the Musketeers so far. A couple easy giveaways there. And you know when you throw it high to a six foot four cutter, it's really high. Blue Jays are on an 8-0 run. Griglione is looking for a cutting bachelor, unable to get it to her. Brodsky splits a couple defenders, and the shot is rejected. What a job there from Ayanna Townsend sending that one into the stands. Yeah, the redshirt freshman from Pittsburgh. Watch this swat here from behind. She gets beat off the dribble, but doesn't give up on the play. Sends it out of bounds, and Creighton still has possession. That's now the second block of the quarter for Xavier, where it looked like the Jays were going to have an easy bucket. So a nice job there by the redshirt freshman. Here's a shot from Sarda, a little long, and a nice rebound taken in, but the Blue Jays are able to get it back. Nice job there by Batchelor to knock it away. Batchelor now going in. Another rejection from Townsend. The second and 20 seconds. And you described them, all of them perfectly. They look like they're going to have an easy look, but the Musketeers not giving up on the play. And a big shot on the other side for Kerry Gross brings Xavier within two. Frantic pace here on the last couple of trips down the floor both ways. Olivia Elger, nice spin move, a little fade away with the left hand. She's able to get the rebound, and they'll call a jump ball. Possession arrow has it going the other way. A lot of activity on both ends there. A lot of bodies just standing around, and Elger able to follow her shot there and claim at least a tie-up. So that'll get the Jays an extra possession later on this first half. One thing we didn't mention about Tatum Rembaugh coming back tonight after missing those eight games. She is on a minutes limit, so that's why you think she started the game. Why isn't she still out there? She is still on a pretty restricted limit uh, of minutes, so not out there a lot here in the first quarter. Here's Dunham over to Wasselson. Wasselson a little long on the three, and the Blue Jays, a couple of them battle for it, and end up losing it out of bounds. Back to Xavier, no, or excuse me, 20 seconds left on the shot clock as it resets. And there you see Rembau adjusting that left knee brace. Dunham. Pranger on the floor for the first time. Dunham for three. Just a little off, and the Blue Jays are able to get it. Here's Sarda. Will she wait? No, she goes by a couple of players and probably should have slowed it down there as Liondecker gets it. And yeah, they had the time, and now Xavier still gets an opportunity. Shot put up there by Aliyah Dunham. I believe the Blue Jays might have tipped it, and that is how the quarter will come to an end. Blue Jays up by two points. Second quarter up next on the Big East Digital Network. each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Trust Arena. Get tickets now. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year. Whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback. However you choose to be a fan, you make the game. And they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats today. 
I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people, the sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now? And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back to TJ Sokol Arena. One quarter down, three to go. Blue Jays up by two. And Rob, that was a really interesting end of the first quarter because both offenses got off to a really good start. But Xavier went one for eight to end the quarter. And the Blue Jays, they missed their last seven. Yeah, it uh, came to a screeching halt after a very exciting start. And Creighton went on that 8-0 run. But Xavier hung right in there. Elger's pass is tipped. Saunders has it. Almost a steal. This is an aggressive team. They will take some chances. Saunders along the baseline, loses it. And there is Lion Decker again, and another jump ball is going to be called. And it goes the other way. Second jump ball to go Xavier's way so far in the first half. Yeah, nice strong take there by Saunders. We talked about her strength. She's only 5'9", but she's second on the team in rebounding. Really stepped up her game in the absence of Rembau uh, missing those last eight games. Saunders has started every conference game and averaging better than 12 points in her last three games and over nine points per game in conference. Yeah, scored 11, 14, and 12 points in the last three games for the Blue Jays. Pace slowing up just a scotch. Here's Gross driving in, up off the glass. Lion Decker gets the board, and it is, it's going to go off of Creighton, and so it'll stay on that side of the court. Another opportunity for the Musketeers for some more second chance points. They got one bucket off an offensive rebound, see if they can do some more damage. Here's a three, just a little strong. A foul is going to be called on the floor on the Blue Jays. That'll go against Gracie Griglione. And got tangled up there with Sarah Leyendecker underneath the basket trying to body up for the rebound. So uh, Xavier again getting to extend this possession even longer. Understandable with Leyendecker. Sarah Leyendecker, the sophomore out of Cincinnati, already seven rebounds. Came into this one only averaging four per game. Here she is, loses possession, and that's going to go out of bounds to the Blue Jays. Another turnover on the Musketeers. And, and Lion Decker's really come on strong over the last, since conference play began, began. She averaged under four points per game in non-conference games, and now she's better than nine in league play. Yeah, so that improvement continues tonight. Here's Rambau for three, and that one goes. And the Blue Jays end that long skid and get a field goal. Yeah, that'll make your uh, knee feel a lot better if you get to knock down your first three since December. Get some confidence going. Blue Jays get the rebound off of the miss by Kerry Gross. Quick trigger there by Xavier, that trip down. Rambau has it again to Sarda. We said her name a lot in the first quarter. Scored 11 points. Will she get to 13? Just a little off on the shot. Ari Gray with the board. Ari Gray averages nine and a half per game. Nice moves there. Trying to get by Saunders. Wanted the foul, doesn't get the call, and the Jays have it again. Yeah, might have been a little bit of contact there. I don't disagree with Gray, but unable to finish. She showed off her ball handling skills there. Really impressive. You think of her as a post player. Sarda a little long on the three. Aliyah Dunham with the rebound. Not just a post, but a wing. She can clearly handle that ball out on the perimeter. Lauren Wasselson driving along the baseline. Got underneath the hoop. I think she might have wanted a foul called there, but no contact. Yeah. She got a little bit out of control there on that baseline move and got herself a little bit too far underneath that backboard and ended up not getting the shot she wanted. Here's Sarda driving in. 
Puts it up, another wild attempt. Nice rebound, though, by Griglione. To a cutting Saunders. Saunders is fouled, and she'll head to the line for a couple. Well, both sides initiating some contact on their drives to the basket, not getting called a lot here. You see that initial attempt started looking for that foul. Creighton keeps the ball alive, and now Saunders does get to go to the free throw line. 70.8% free throw shooter this year is Rachel Saunders, averaging seven and a half points per game. But as Rob mentioned a few moments ago, really has come on strong over the last few. Uh, shooting 46% from the field in those three games, better than 12 points per game in those last three contests for the Jays. First free throw is missed. Saunders, the sophomore out of Iowa City. We saw glimpses of her potential as a freshman last year, and she's really, Coach Flannery said, I can't believe what she's doing. When we talked to him this week, she, he said, I really can't believe what she's doing. She's really impressed him with her play over the last seven games. Largest lead in this one for either side. Jay's up by six with seven and a half to go in the first half. Xavier just needs a bucket. They got one late in the first quarter. But nothing so far in quarter number two. Here's Ari Gray with a couple of Blue Jays on her. That one doesn't get the friendly roll rebound by Townsend. She gets another rebound, and she ends the scoreless streak, and Xavier trails by four. Yeah, Xavier really starting to dominate the glass. They're last in the league in rebound, rebounding margin, but right now plus six. Saunders for three. High arcing, and that one doesn't go, and Lauren Wasselson gets the rebound. Minus four rebounding margin on average on the season, but like I just said, plus eight now after those offensive rebounds and that previous defensive possession there. Yeah, good job by Townsend. Lion Decker has had a strong start as well. Here's a wild shot put up by Wasselson, and now it'll go the other way. Chloe Dwarf. Rembao. Deja Ross defending her. A six foot junior out of Providence. Parham. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Xavier Musketeer player goes down and another block. Parham with the, she gets it on the block, puts it up, and that one doesn't fall, and so the lead remains four. Yeah, block party here for Xavier. That's their fifth block that they've been credited with. Creighton's been credited with three as well, so not a typical game for either side here with all these block shots going up. The defense that has closed out on a lot of these possessions has been very strong for both sides. And this game has kind of grinded to a halt. Here's a long two put up by Dunham, and that one doesn't go. Rembao going the other way. Saunders to Sarda. Sarda back to Saunders. And a nice job there, pickpocket by Deja Ross. She goes the other way and lays it in. And Xavier now, after all of their offensive struggles, they only trail by two. Well, they're just one for 10 from the field in this quarter before knocking down that breakaway layup. Almost got another steal. Here's Parham inside. Might have been blocked again by Townsend, and she is able to corral it. Well, the inside presence of Xavier really asserting themselves right now for the Musketeers, really making it difficult for the Blue Jays. They're able to penetrate, but they're not able to finish right now. They're just one for nine in this quarter, so woeful shooting on both sides. And a whistle is blown, and a turnover now for Xavier, and it'll give it to the Blue Jays when we return. Jays up by two, and in the first half, coming up next. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
I'm from Chicago. Cleveland. Phoenix, Milwaukee. Hartford. Colorado. Oklahoma. Thailand. Norway. Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business. Chemical science. Occupational therapy. Philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. fans enjoying the scoreboard so far as the Jays up by two halfway through the second quarter and of course Rob the Jays tonight doing so without Jalen Agnew second consecutive game that she has missed because of a concussion that she suffered a couple of matchups ago yeah unfortunately we understand that she's part of our viewing audience tonight because she's not on the bench uh, just because of those post concussion syndromes in back in the offices here at DJ Silk Lorena watching this one from back there. Sorry, Jalen, that you have to listen to us. <laughs> Much rather be listening to Coach Flannery scream at you, I'm sure. Elger, nice pass to Batchelor. Batchelor lays that one in. The Jays had been three for their last 18 from the floor after a pretty strong start. Both of these teams were knocking down shots early, Rob. Xavier on the other side, they're only three for their last 19. Yeah, it turned ugly pretty quick, but credible defenses too. They've really tightened up, especially Xavier's inside presence. Ari Gray with a wild shot there. She wanted a foul, doesn't get it. Temi Sarda racing the other way. And that leads to another turnover. Here's Gray very quickly. Decides to pull it up. Nice kick out there to Sharps for three, a little short. And BD Pryor with the rebound. Yeah, all started with Deja Ross with her second steal and creating fast break opportunities for Xavier. Brodsky with a high arcing shot and looks like the Jays, there were two players there. They could have gotten the offensive rebound, but a battle between Carly Batchelor and Timmy Sarda has to go out of bounds to Xavier. And we talked about Xavier. One of their struggles this year has been rebounding outside of the league's leading rebounder. Gray, they rank last in rebound margin, but they certainly don't look like that type of team tonight. Oh, they have done a really good job cleaning up the glass. Dunham to Gray. Gray inside to Townsend. Townsend puts it up. Nice shot. Xavier trails by two. Really nice under control take there by the redshirt freshman Townsend. Seems like Xavier had been getting a little sped up when they got close to the basket. That time she, she understood she had a good matchup against Peyton Brodsky, Brodsky and, and really took her time. Speaking of Brodsky, she loses the ball there. Nice job by Gray getting a hand on it. Xavier trying to tie it, and they do. Ori Gray puts it up, and it's 22 all with a little over two and a half left in the first half. Defense to offense there. The steal on the reach in from Gray presented that opportunity for herself, and she almost got another one there. Brodsky wide open for three. That one rolls out, is able to chase it down, get her own rebound. A jump ball will be called, and the possession arrow keeps it here. Well, it was. The attempted steal by Gray that, that allowed Brodsky that open three, but when she let go of it, she took off. And here's that steal and finish by Gray on the previous end, and Creighton trying to make something out of this possession now offensively. And Jim Flannery, we had a chance to talk to him before the game. He said they're going to take some chances, and you saw that there, a little risk reward on the last two possessions. Nice cut by Greg Leon, and the travel's gonna be called. Yeah, she just couldn't handle the bounce pass cleanly from Dee Dee Pryor, and ended up taking that extra step as she tried to establish 
establish herself in the paint for the Blue Jays. Xavier so, trying to gain the lead again. And the last lead that they had was in the first quarter. They led by four at one point in time. But the Jays took the lead late, and they were able to get up by six at one point in this quarter. But Xavier's done a good job battling back and playing some really good defense. Yeah, Creighton just two of 12 here in this quarter, and credit that interior shot blocking by the Musketeers. And an offensive foul is going to be called inside. That's Sarah Liondecker called for that one. Yeah, she was trying to establish herself down low, picks up her second personal foul, so she'll head to the bench. And that's unfortunate for Mel Moore and that side because she has done a really good job on the glass. Seven rebounds. Her teammate Ayanna Townsend also with seven boards. Here's Pryor inside. I don't think that she expected nobody to be there, Rob, and she just went up a little too strong. Well, we've seen that a couple of times now from the Blue Jays where they get close to the basket. And they don't get it contested, but they still can't finish because of the threat that is out there still. Yeah, I think as a nice drive inside by Ayanna Townsend. And Xavier retakes the lead for the first time since the first quarter and an and one opportunity. Yeah, watch Townsend just put it on the floor, go right around Greg Leone. And she's whistled for the infraction and Townsend with the opportunity to finish the three point play. Already at six points, averaging under four points per game is the six foot two freshman from Pittsburgh. What a drive there. And Xavier now with the lead. And the free throw a little strong. Only a 55% shooter is Townsend. Brodsky to Pryor. And you see more of that defense being played right now by Xavier. Trying to get another turnover. They might be able to. No, Brodsky is able to get it for three. Wanted the friendly roll. And a foul will be called on the floor. And that'll go against Carly Batchelor and the Blue Jays. Yeah, battling for that rebound. And box out set up well by Xavier. Of course, Creighton not only missing Jalen Agnew for her offense, but her defense out there. You can see that that's missing. She's their leading rebounder as well. Speaking of defense. Nice job there by Pryor. She goes up. And once again, I think footsteps. She was worried about him. Nice job there by Batchelor to clean it up. And it's tied at 24. Rob, I think that right now, with the way that Xavier has blocked a lot of these shots, that there is a worry when the Blue Jays get into the paint, and I think that's causing them to miss some of these shots. Yeah, they absolutely agree. I think that they are thinking about the potential of being there and trying to hesitate with their shots, and they're doing harm to themselves. Townsend out to Gray. Gray back to Townsend near the free throw line. Nice pump fake and drive. And Xavier with the lead again, and the Xavier bench on their feet. High-fiving each other, trying to go into the half up by two. Game and shot clock basically even, and everybody knows that. And so Temi Sarda is going to hold on to it for the time being. Townsend, eight points tonight coming into this one. She had only scored seven points total in her last four contests. Her career high is nine, and she'll probably best that in the second half. A shot put up by Elger. It doesn't go, and so we will go into the halftime break with Xavier up 26 to 24 after closing out the first half on a nice run. More to come during the half, highlight stats, and a whole lot more. Xavier up by two. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
Welcome back to DJ Sokol Arena, where it is halftime between the Xavier Musketeers and the Creighton Blue Jays. This weekend marks the fourth edition of Fox College Basketball All Access. Sunday at 6.30 on FS1, Seton Hall will take on St. John's at Walsh Gym, and both head coaches will be mic'd up for the duration of the limited commercial production. Fox Sports will also take viewers inside huddles, into the locker room pre- and post-game, and much more. This week on Big East Fast Break, Megan Caffrey caught up with Tony Bazella and Joe Tartamella ahead of their all-access matchup. Ahead of Sunday's St. John's Seton Hall all-access game on FS1 at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm joined with the head coaches of both of those teams, Johnny's head coach Joe Tartamella and Pirates head coach Tony Bazella. Coach B, Coach T, you guys have both coached in an all-access game before. What is this experience like? Go ahead, Tony. It is, um, it's a little nerve wracking, to be honest with you. You're always thinking of, of what not to say as opposed to what to say, to be honest with you. Um, but it's a great experience, and I think it gives the viewers a tremendous opportunity to see what coaching is really like. You know, it, it, the timeouts, the strategy during the game, um, you know, halftime, pregame. Um, I think it's just a great experience. Yeah, I, I think probably, uh, Four years ago or three years ago, whenever we both agreed to do the first one ever, uh, I'm not sure we probably knew what we were getting into at that time, but uh, certainly it was an, uh, an exciting um, game to be a part of. It's an interesting game as a coach because you're really mindful of kind of what you're saying and what you're doing, but I think at the end of the day, you realize you got to just um, coach the way you would coach any other game, and um, I feel a little bit better about that than I probably did in the first game uh, that we did years ago. Um, and then just seeing it done over time. But it's, um, it's a great way to give exposure to the game. And, and I think um, it's only going to continue to get better and give fans more access. And that seems to be what, um, you know, what the new wave of where things have been going with uh, how to interact with the game and how to be uh, or how to show different sides of, uh, of game like situations to fans. Coach Tarmella, you mentioned it right there. You and Coach Bazella were the first to coach in this. Back in 2016, you guys had the first all-access game. How cool is it to see how much this has gotten a lot of traction that now the men's side of things are doing it as well? I think it's great. I mean, they came to both of us with the idea, and, uh, you know, we were happy to do it. I think we're both a little probably hesitant in ways, but um, – to see that it's still going on means that we, we did something right and they did something right. And I know the people at Fox and uh, Steve Shear especially has done a great job in being able to promote it. And um, so to watch now some of the men's coaches and they've probably asked Tony and I both about our experience with it before they've done it. So, um, you know, I think it's pretty, pretty amazing to, to see. And uh, again, I think it gives different coaches – uh, or fans different views of the coaches that they follow and the programs that they follow um, and you know and I think it brings a different dimension to how you watch a game so uh, it, it's been exciting to know that we were part of the first one. We had talked to the two of you back at media day about this all access game and how fun especially with this matchup between St. John's and Seton Hall because it's a great rivalry and you do have a lot of the same players who have grown up playing against one another so how unique is it for this rivalry to get the all-access game? I think that's what makes it special. I mean, we have so much respect for St. John's and how well they do. And, I mean, look at all the success Joe's had and obviously Kim before him. But, you know, it's a great game because, you know, it, it's, it's – it's the biggest, I think, the biggest rivalry in the Big East. I mean, we're close to each other. We recruit a lot of the same players. We're both really competitive teams. Um, we're competitive coaches. And I, I just love playing them because of who they are and what they've bought and the bar they've raised that we have to, you know, make sure we, you know, do our best to be competitive. Yeah, I think, I mean, every every game you play is in a league, in, in league play is, is pretty – I would say competitive, contentious, um, you know, there, there's going to be days where you're playing really well and days where you don't. And um, certainly when you've got an opportunity because of the way we play in our schedule, you're playing Friday, Sunday, the, the rhythm to that is very different as we've gone through the last few years. So when you've got a, uh, a little bit more time and, and you've got that bye week, especially against your travel partner, so to speak, in that week, you know, you're trying to make sure that, um, you know, everything is, is ready. It's in place. And, and certainly both teams know each other probably better than any team they're going to play because of that. So you've got more time to repair. You're not talking about maybe a day, a day and a half. So along with the, the proximity 
uh, of being able to know the players in most programs that obviously we've watched play over time, um, you know, along with others that are a part of that. Uh, it certainly adds to that piece of the competitiveness. A ton of competition to look forward to. What else can everyone look forward to this Sunday? I think a great atmosphere. We're really promoting it. I know St. John's always brings a lot of fans, and it's going to be a really you know, be close to a sellout. We're excited for that. Um, you know, our, our administration is really pushing it really hard. I know, like I said, Joe's fans travel really well. I think you're going to see a lot of scoring. I mean, both these are two of the better scoring teams in the league. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, this is the halfway part of the year. So, you know, you want to finish it strong. I said, this is the women's basketball game of the week. Um, you know, I, I really believe that. And, uh, you know, of the weekend, I should say. And um, it would be exciting for everyone. Yeah, I, I, and obviously, hopefully, at being at a 6.30 time, you know, that we've got uh, better viewership and, and being able to push through some of the things that may be on during the day. So, um, you know, as Tony said, it's not, you know, when you go there, it's uh, obviously a very um, unique atmosphere. And, and the, you know, the fans, are it's loud. People are on you. They, they pack it out. It's good. I mean, it, it's, so it's a great atmosphere to play in. Um, and so it'll be definitely an exciting game, obviously, with some – or we think with some pace – uh, as Tony and I would believe, but, uh, but yeah, so I think that, uh, you know, it'll be an exciting game for people to see and, and hopefully I don't get, you know, bleep too much and you know, nor does Tony or we, we're not, you know, on the court, uh, at, at all times. So no, but it's, it'll be good. I think, um, you know, again, it's a great matchup and, and it's a, it's a big game for obviously both teams and, uh, you know, as we move forward in the league. So as Tony said, it's the halfway mark for both of us at mm -hmm. this point, cause this is the, the last game of our kind of our round Robin. Um, and then we continue to push on. So, no, it'll be exciting. I think uh, fans will enjoy the style of play and hopefully the personalities that are involved. <laughs> well, back in 2016, it surely was extremely fun to watch you guys. Both of these coaches will be mic'd up at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. Coach Tarnmel and Coach Bazella, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Thanks Megan. Welcome back to DJ Sokol Arena. We are at the half, Xavier 26, Creighton 24, with 20 more minutes to go alongside Rob Sims. I am Josh Peterson. Rob, Xavier's defense really turned it up, especially in that second quarter. Whether it was blocking shots or getting some steals, it allowed them to take that lead at the break. Well, when we talked to Coach Mel Moore this week, she talked about KYP, know your personnel. And I think after that first flurry of activity by the Blue Jays in the opening five minutes, Xavier figured out their personnel, who they needed to be guarding, and they really shut down Creighton in the second quarter. Let's take a look at the highlights from what we saw in the first 20 minutes of this one. It was a fun beginning for the offenses, and after that, the defenses took over. There's another swat by Ayana Townsend. She had a great first half. Yeah, you see a couple of blocks there by Townsend, and She's already having a career night, 10 rebounds in the opening half in her last four games. She had scored seven points and had six rebounds combined tonight. Eight points, 10 rebounds in the first half alone. You see some of the steals. Ari Gray there was able to lay that one in, and that was something that Jim Flannery talked about. They are gonna take some chances, and they certainly did in the second quarter, and that's why they are up by two. It was a great start, though, Rob, for Temi Sarda. Yeah, Temi Sarda, 11 points, and here you're gonna see a bunch of them. 11 points in the first six minutes of this ball game. She has zero since that fast start, and the Blue Jays are gonna need her to kick it back into gear if they wanna come from behind for another home victory. Blue Jays. Only nine for 35 from the field, but they are five of 13 from beyond the arc. So four of 22 on two-point shots. And you see it there, the field goal percentages, not great for either team, but those three-pointers right now, Rob, really the only reason that the Jays are still in this one. Yeah, the interior presence by Xavier has really caused fits for the Blue Jays. That's why they only hit three of 17 shots in the second quarter. As you see, their shooting percentage dipping below 30%. And great job by that Xavier defense. You see the turnover numbers there, but really it was those blocks, and it's not going to show up on the stat sheet, but the Blue Jays missed some bunnies in the first half as well, Rob, and I think, and we both think, that a part of that is because they were nervous about more block shots potentially. You're absolutely correct. They altered their own shots out of fear of those block shots by Xavier coming 
because they blocked a lot of those shots from behind, and, and so that fear factor crept in and caused those bunnies to be missed. It's just about time for the second half. We will have that on the other side. Xavier up by two with two quarters to go. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? And we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year, whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback, however you choose to be a fan, you make the game, and they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats today. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Just about time for the second half in Omaha. Xavier up 26 to 24 on Tatum Rimbaud and the Blue Jays. Rimbaud back in the lineup for the first time since December 14th. She missed eight games. Blue Jays went four and four without her. And they trail by two to the Musketeers of Xavier. Alongside Rob Sims, I am Josh Peterson. The huddle there for the Blue Jays, Jim Flannery in his 18th season with Creighton. Some final notes and messages as his team is prepared for the second half. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Flannery, what adjustments he tries to make to get his team the looks that they're accustomed to getting. They're almost settling, going inside rather than shooting those threes that they typically take. It's a, it was an unusual first half for them that they, we mentioned that they shot pretty well from the perimeter, the five of 13 from three, and they were able to penetrate, but that penetration isn't doing them any good right now. So maybe look for them to penetrate and kick to an open shooter on the perimeter if that open shooter is available. Matt D. Marinas, who covers Creighton for White and Blue Review, had some stats. On Twitter at the half, the Jays went three for 21 over the final 12 and a half minutes and only eight points on their final 24 possessions. So great defense being played. Here's Gray going right at the hoop. She misses and a falling out of bounds and quickly the Jays have it. And to be fair, we mentioned the bunnies that Creighton missed. Xavier has missed some as well. Here's a three point shot put up by Rambao. Nice job there by Bachelor to get the rebound. Excellent backdoor cut from Gracie Griglione, and the Jays tie it up at 26. And just a different look here for the Blue Jays out of the half with Saunders on the bench and Bachelor out there to start the half for Creighton, making some adjustments initially with the lineup. Nice drive there by Kerry Gross, averaging nine and a half points per game on the season, and now she has seven in this one. 
Inbound. You see the left brace on that knee. She was riding the bike at the half. Puts up a little floater, short. Rebound taken in by Aaliyah Dunham. And Rembaugh played eight minutes there in the first half, her first action since December 14th. We mentioned she is on a limit, a minute's limit as Gray gets fouled on the way up. And Rembaugh not quite back in the flow of the offense yet for Creighton. Gray trying to get in the flow on offense for her team. You see her get fouled on that attempt, but she has had some opportunities, but only knocked down three of her 11 attempts here. She's their leading scorer, and actually with Jalen Agnew sitting this one out for the Blue Jays, she's the active leading scorer in Big East Conference play. She averages better than 20 points per game in league play compared to Agnew, who leads all players with 23 points per game in conference action. Throws one of two at the line. Came into this game attempting the most free throws of any player on that team. She's up to 97 now on the season. Great work there by Sarda to split a couple of defenders and get the basket. Well, if you're a Creighton fan, you are happy to see the penetration paying off there. Look at Sarda wanting to force Dunham to go right there. Gray with the long three. That was short and off. And so it goes the other way again. Elger. Creighton really spreading the floor on this offensive possession here. Offense already looking a little better in this quarter than it did most of quarter number two. And there's a nice shot and make by Sarda. And she'll go to the free throw line for one more. Jays with the lead. So again, another strong finish, which was lacking. But again, mentioned it at the start of that offensive possession. Creighton really stretching out and spreading out on offense for Sarda allowing her to penetrate without as many bodies down there to get in the way of that shot. Demi Sarda up to 16 points on the game. Came into this one averaging 12 and a half. Nice job by Pryor to get the steal. And then Sarda is gonna travel. I don't think she expected it. I think she expected someone to be there and Deja Ross was just a little bit off to the side. Couldn't decide if she wanted to put up a three or what she was going to do. And now a turnover as Sarda's able to chase it down. Elger, wide open for three. She's fouled, and she will go to the free throw line. Yeah, the chaos that ensued from the, the poor inbound pass by Xavier there. You see Jalen Agnew made her way out. She couldn't stay in, she couldn't stand listening to us, Josh. She she watched the first half was our understanding from back in the offices and said, you know what, I, I love what the BEDN provides, but I need to see this for myself and, and be with my team. So it's nice to see her out there. Uh, we mentioned missing the game because of those concussion syndromes she suffered at Seton Hall last Friday, missed the St. John's game, missing tonight. Don't know about her status for Sunday yet, but Creighton, they're happy to have her on the bench, even if she can't contribute on the court tonight. And all three free throws fall, and suddenly it is a five-point Blue Jay lead. And a long pass to Deja Ross. She puts up a long two, and another very quick possession, Rob. Yeah. Sarda has it the other way. Well, if the outlet pass works, it gets you there, and it gets you an easy look. If it, if it gets you in front of everybody else and you take that shot, your, teammate, your teammates aren't there to get the offensive rebound. Here's Sarda again, a little strong. Ball bounces around, and rebound taken in by Liondecker. See what Xavier does on this offensive possession if they slow it down and try to set up something. Leah Dunham with the freshman D.D. Pryor on her. What a great cut back door by Gray. Pass was just a little off. She gets it back in front of the bench. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Gray, excellent handles. Floater. That one goes in and was much needed, and that will lead to the first timeout of the second half for Mel Moore and the Xavier Musketeers as they trail by three. More basketball coming up next on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. 
We have no debt. We don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. From Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? And we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Back to Omaha, Creighton up 34-31 on Xavier. See the scores of the other games, a couple of them final, and a battle going on right now between the top two teams in the conference as DePaul has started pulling away up by 17 on Villanova. As the Blue Jays with the possession after the timeout was called by Mel Moore, and a foul is going to be called on the floor on Xavier, that will go against Deja Ross. Yeah, Deja Ross disagreeing with the call. She's called for the hold on Sarda as she was starting to cut. Both offenses so far, Rob, in this quarter have gotten off to much better starts than they did in the second quarter. Jay shooting 50%, 40% for the Musketeers. Sammy Sarda. Crowd letting her know that there isn't a whole lot of time left on the shot clock. Spinning around, puts it up, gets the friendly roll of TJ Sokol. Jay's up by five. That is an impressive take. She's very undersized matching up with Ari Gray, the six footer. Sarda at just 5'9", but found a way to get under there and finish strong. Sarda with 18 now on the night, and without Jalen Agnew, that is much needed. Gray got hit in the face. Her goggles fell down. It's five on four right now for the Blue Jays. No foul was called. Elcher for three, a little off. Rebound taken in by Batchelor, and that will lead to a whistle. As you see Gray there, hand hit her in the face, knocked the goggles off. She's in pain. Let's see what happened here. Oh, yeah. Didi Pryor trying to reach in from behind and caught her glasses. And that's a situation where they're going to take a look at it, but they missed the foul initially. You almost think if the glasses aren't there, she may not have even touched Gray. That's a, that's a difficult one. It'll be interesting to see how the officials interpret that. But, you, yeah, Josh, you mentioned you were pointing out that a little bit of a cut there on the, the top of her nose caused by those glasses. Yeah. And hopefully she's okay as she heads over to the bench. And yeah, there's a cut that's pretty much right at the top. You yeah. can see it there. And watch the right arm of Pryor come around from behind right there. And yeah, I think that cut, Rob, you know, the, the part that goes over the bridge of your nose there, just the way yep. that it came down. And you see it there. Hopefully none of the officials okay. yeah, none of the officials saw it. They didn't whistle it as it happened. 
And they're taking a look at it right now. And so yeah, that's awkward because they missed the initial call. And now they need to take a look at it and make a decision on it. And so they will they will meet and discuss what their final call will be. Yeah, great. Clearly in some pain there on the bench. Just going to play on. Let's see if the officials go and talk to the official score. One of the officials will head over and talk to Melmore. And looks like she's explaining. See the conversation there on what happened. And they're not, it doesn't appear that they're retroactively going to call the foul there. And Carly Batchelor on the other end while the Jays were playing five on four. She got the offensive rebound and was fouled on her putback attempt. Batchelor, almost a 62% free throw shooter on the year, misses the front end. Yeah, Creighton leads the conference in free throw shooting in Big East play, one of the top free throw shooting teams in the country on the season, 13th in the nation. But you mentioned Batchelor, not one of the stronger free throw shooters for this good free throw shooting team. Second one does fall. Jays match now their largest lead of the game, and there's going to be a quick whistle on Carly Batchelor as she reached in on Aaliyah Dunham. Yeah, Dunham putting on the burners there, and Batchelor trying to keep up with her, put her right arm out to slow her down, and was whistled for that one. And so now, Rob, kind of wondering how long will it take for this game to kind of get back into the rhythm that it was in with the stoppage after Gray had her goggles knocked off. She's still on the bench talking to trainer, looks like an assistant coach as well. Aaliyah Dunham over to Lauren Wasselson inside to Lion Decker. Lion Decker splits a couple defenders. Another offensive rebound and now a career high for Ayanna Townsend. Her previous career high was nine points versus Robert Morris last month, and now she is into double figures. Uh, she's got a double-double as well, career best 11 rebounds. Here's a three, and a miss there from Dee Dee Pryor, and rebound taken in by Lion Decker. Coach Flannery shrugging as though he did not want Dee Dee Pryor to be taking that attempt that quick in the shot clock. Yeah, that was a fast shot. We've seen that on both sides tonight. There's a nice two mid-range jumper from Lauren Wasselson, and it's a two-point game. And you like the fight here by Xavier, and that was what Coach Moore kept telling us when we talked to her. Yeah, they've only won two games, but she is really proud of the fight that they have shown. They don't give up, they don't back down, they keep fighting even though the results just haven't come for them yet. Bachelor with the left hand driving, puts it up with the right, and the Jays are back up by four. Nice move. Lion Decker with the challenge out high. It was that challenge that enabled Bachelor to put it on the floor and get around her. Here's Dunham. Decides to pull up. Nice shot there from Malia Dunham, the saw or the junior, excuse me, out of West Virginia. They saw, saw the communication there by the two Blue Jay freshmen in that switch. Dee Dee Pryor and Carly Batch were talking, but backed off just enough to give Dunham the space to hit the shot. Here's Sarda back to Pryor. Pryor looking around, gives it over to Batchelor in front of the great bench, takes a jab step. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Pryor is going to have to put it up. Pryor has it taken away. No shot clock violation is called, so Xavier has it the other side. Yeah, because Xavier maintained possession there, the refs didn't whistle that play dead. Townsend driving in. Another foul is called, and she will head to the free throw line for a couple with 3.35 to go. And that will lead to a media timeout. So the free throws will take place on the other side with the Jays up by two, but an opportunity to tie this one up deep into the third quarter. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? And we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back to DJ Sokol Arena. Blue Jays up by two points, 39-37 late in the third quarter. But a couple of free throws about to take place for the Xavier Musketeers. Ayanna Townsend heads to the free throw line. 55.2% free throw shooter this season. 0 for 1 from the line this evening. Uh, you saw there 10 points, 11 rebounds tonight. Coming into tonight in her first seven Big East games, she had scored a total of 10 points and had a total of 12 rebounds. So doubling her output tonight alone here in Omaha. Goes one of two, so Xavier trails by one. It's interesting, Rob, because you know it, it's, it seemed like both teams at times were maybe going to pull away or feel comfortable at least for a few minutes. And every time that the lead extends to four or five or six, the other team comes roaring back, and neither team has been able to really have some extra space to work with. Uh, neither team can sustain what they want to do on offense. They Both defenses are really dictating what's going on right now. And we're seeing more good defense being played by Xavier. Elger's gonna have to put it up, gets it off just in time, and it somehow goes in. They're gonna take a look at the replay. I think that one, though, Rob, is good. I think, yeah, watching it from the naked eye, it looked to be good from here. And we'll have a chance to, to look at it right here. Here's the angle from oh, yeah. the other baseline. Easily out of her hands. The turnaround fadeaway jumper. And that will not take them long to review. That'll, you wouldn't think. That'll give Elger five points on the night, averaging about nine and a half per game this season. Well, and she's a player that we talked to Coach Flannery about this week, too, that they need her to get going to really be successful, especially without Jalen Agnew on the floor. She's somebody who doesn't practice a lot, a fifth-year fifth senior just like Agnew. Hardly practices at all because of all the injuries she has sustained. But they need to get her going and really be a part of the offense if they want to have success. The two is good, and so it's a three-point lead by Creighton. Couldn't agree. Agnew's absence is so noticeable at times because in the past this season when the Jays had some of their lulls on offense, she would take the ball at to the top of the key and just drive right inside. A foul's going to be called on Elger. And put up a layup, put up a strong layup, and just haven't really been able to see that tonight. There is Jalen Agnew missing the second straight game with those concussion-like symptoms. Big East Player of the Week four times this year. Yeah, four times already. No Creighton player has ever won a Conference Player of the Week award four times in the history of this storied program. So that tells you how good she has been this year. And a pass goes in with a couple of Musketeers running into each other. So Elger hands it off to Rembau. Rembau looked like she was going to pull up, gives it back to Elger. And now Sarda has it. Elger thought about it, decides not to shoot it. Rembau to Brodsky. 
Great defense being played right now by Xavier. Yeah, they are staying in front of every Blue Jay. The spacing is really impressive on their defense. Sarda, pull up Jay, a little short. Nice rebound, though, by Bachelor, And she gets the follow-up. Jay's up by five. Yeah, the spacing on Xavier uh, as Creighton tries to penetrate the lane. Xavier is doing such a great job of staying on the blocks there and collapsing and not allowing any space for that dribble penetration. It really messes up what Creighton tries to do on offense. Gary Gross. See Ari Gray back on the floor. Good to see her. After having the glasses slapped off of her face, driving along the baseline, lost the dribble. Jay Savage, Sarda going the other way. She has Bachelor to her left, Rembao behind her, to Rembao, to Brodsky. Brodsky was trying to get it to Bachelor, but what a steal by Dunn. Almost one of those situations where you're almost being too unselfish. Couldn't agree more, a long three is missed. The rebound was taken in by Gross, but she loses it out of bounds with a minute and a half left in the quarter. Yeah, Rob, I, I think that that's a really good way to describe what happened on the other end for the Blue Jays. It was such a pretty possession with each pass, and I think they wanted to have one of those highlight reel moments instead of getting the smart play. And you think if Brodsky goes up with that shot, even if she misses, Bachelor's there to rebound. Instead, she tried to get it to her, but a great job by Dunham to get back on defense and steal that one away. Here's Bachelor over to Peyton Brodsky. Brodsky with a little jab step. Elger hands it off to Sarda. And an offensive foul is going to be called. And it goes the other way. That'll be called on Timmy Sarda. And Ashley Gomez getting some run out there, as is Courtney Pranger. So really digging deep into the Xavier bench right now is Coach Mel Moore. And Gomez taking the charge. She only averages about nine minutes per game. And so now Xavier down by five. Gross, fans wanted to travel. Here's Gomez trying to get it to Dunham. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. What a move there by Dunham. Gomez has the shot blocked. Brodsky takes it in and is able to get it very quickly to Sarda as she falls out of bounds. Elger to the trailing Brodsky. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Olivia Elger driving the baseline. Elger, the lefty, puts it up. Strong. Rebound by Bachelor. She tries to go up. No shot clock violation. Instead, it goes the other way. Jays fans wanted to travel. They don't get one. And Gross goes up, and she will be fouled. And so she'll head to the free throw line for two. And you hear the Boo Birds coming out here in Omaha. A lot of contact they thought on the opposite end there as Carly Batchford tried to beat the shot clock and instead got it taken away or blocked there by Townsend. It leads to a fast break opportunity from Xavier and Creighton fouls giving these free throws to Kerry Gross. Gross the 70% free throw shooter this season. Yeah, that's one of those moments, Rob, where the crowd is booing, not so much for the foul that was called on exactly. this end, but that that call ended up and their other side, the other side rather, didn't happen. First free throw missed. As a team, Xavier just a 66% free throw shooting team, and they need all the points they can get right now. And one thing we talked about as Creighton has built this lead back a little bit, we talked about with Coach Moore, and she said we can't beat ourselves. we got to take care of the basketball, and some turnovers leading to 15 points. 12 turnovers by Xavier, leading directly to 15 points for Creighton. Both free throws missed, but Gray with an offensive rebound inside. Wow. And she is fouled, and that will be called on Temi Sarda. Yeah, Olivia Elger was saying, I got all ball. And that might have been the case. Elger may have gotten all ball, but they called the foul on Sarda underneath. That's really important, too, because that's her third here with still one full quarter to go. And she's picked up now a couple in the last few minutes. So yeah, three fouls now for Sarda, and a high arcing a free throw is in for Ari Gray. Never mind the fact that that's another offensive rebound for Xavier for some more second chance opportunities. Second free throw up and good for Ari Gray coming back onto the floor after having the goggles knocked off. And good to see everything's okay. Hand off to Sarda. Six seconds left in the quarter. Sarda. Hands it off to Dwarik. Dwarik back over to Sarda for three, and that one falls. Nothing but nylon, and the quarter ends with.
with the Blue Jays up by six, 46 to 40. What a shot there, one more quarter to go, and we will have that next on the Big East Digital Network. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're here for the memories that last a lifetime or the dance that happens just once a year, whether you ride for the Cinderella or go all in for the legendary comeback. However you choose to be a fan, you make the game. And they make history. March 20th and 22nd in Omaha, Nebraska. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash MBB tickets to get your seats today. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people, the sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now? And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. One quarter to go from DJ Sokol Arena. Creighton leads 46 to 40 over Xavier with a late three by Temi Sarda, who now has 21 points on the night and is four away from tying a career high. Well, you saw the give and go there. She started the possession, got it to Chloe Dwarak, and because of that action was just enough screening action to get her open for the shot. Sarda, nice move there, puts it up off the glass, a little strong, and the rebound taken in by Ayana Townsend. Jay shot 50% in the third quarter after a 17.5% second. And they got Sarda involved again in the offense. 11 points in the first quarter, shut out in the second quarter, and then 10 in that quarter. And a wild shot put up there by Carrie Gross, and Creighton has it going the other way. Elger picks up her dribble. She gets it back very quickly. Nobody there, and a little strong on the three in the rebound by Wasserson. Well, that was not a KYP situation there. They did not know their personnel there as they left Elger wide open. It didn't hurt them. The Musketeers, it didn't hurt them, but it very well could have. A little defensive lapse there by Xavier. Ari Gray driving in, trying to get by a couple defenders, runs into Brodsky. She doesn't get the foul call, but the shot goes in anyway, and Xavier trails by four. I thought that was the right no call there. Brodsky stood her ground, just standing flat-footed there and hands straight up. Gray caused the contact. She was able to finish. I thought that was the right no call there. Sarda driving in, and it looked like another block was going to be given to Townsend, but instead a foul is called, and so Sarda will head to the free throw line. Yeah, Townsend just having a stellar game tonight. Those 11 points and 12 rebounds, a couple block shots, and that one nearly another block shot, but instead it results in free throws for Sarda, who's in the top five in the conference in free throw shooting coming into tonight, 82% at the line. It's the first one to go. It looked like Rob on the replay there 
It was fine with the ball. It was just that her arm came down and maybe hit her on top of her head on the follow through. Both free throws fall up to 23 now is Sarda. A couple away from tying her career high. She had that in the season opener back in November versus the Omaha Mavericks. Dunham. Townsend trying to go by a couple of wow. Blue Jays and a foul is going to be called on Brodsky. And so Townsend will head to the free throw line. And again, I don't think the boos were because of the foul call. So she got away with an extra step or two here. Certainly looked like it to these fans here. I think there was only two though, There's so the officials whistle the foul and that'll get Townsend a chance to add to her career night here as the redshirt freshman producing outstanding numbers in Omaha. Gets the first one to go up to 12 points now. Five of seven shooting, two of four from the free throw line. As we've talked about, a double-double. Ten boards this evening. She had 10 points, 12 rebounds, and seven Big East games coming into the night. She's got 12 and 12 now. What a performance. Second free throw miss. She knew it right away. And a foul is going to be called on the floor. And it's going to be called on the Blue Jays. It's yeah. going to be called on Olivia Elger. Elger trying to box out Gray there. Game's getting a little physical here. As you can see Ariana Gray talking to the officials. She, I don't know what if she's looking for more of a, a call than what she got, but she got the call. And Xavier maintains possession again with a chance to cut back into this Creighton lead. 8.25 to go. Xavier down by five. Dunham picks up her dribble, going inside to Townsend. Townsend is going to lose the ball, but it does go off of Brodsky, it looks like, so it stays on this side. I think Bachelor may have been able to reach in from the other side and poke it out of bounds there, but you can see Xavier really exploiting the size advantage they have with Townsend and taking advantage of that. And Creighton again whistled for another foul. Their third foul already in two minutes in the second quarter, or excuse me, in the fourth quarter. That one is on Carly Batchelor, and that is her third. But yeah, more importantly, a third foul, a minute 52 into the final frame. And the officials want to take a look at something. They're trying to do it quickly without interrupting play too much here, but I don't know if that's possible <laughs> really to, to not have the players clear out. They're all ready to inbound the ball. And yeah, I don't. That's Kevin Pethel over there trying to take a sneak peek at, I think he may have just wanted to make sure he got the foul call correct, and that might have been the reason why he did that. And you see Tatum Renbaugh checking back in for the Blue Jays. Again, on that minutes limitation, Renbaugh comes back in. She's already played 14, so you, you don't think she'll go over 20 tonight, probably her first game back with that knee injury. So it'll be interesting to see as a jump ball keeps it with Xavier. Nice job there by Timmy Sarda. You wonder, Rob, if you're correct in guessing about six more minutes, do they all come right here? And if that's the case, you're looking at about two minutes and change to go, perhaps when she leaves. Dunham, there's just a lot of bodies there. She was trying to find something. Gross has it. The defense continues to be strong. Decker for three. She misses that. That's her 11th attempt from beyond the arc this year. Brodsky with the rebound. She gets it back in front of the bench. Sarda, blocked again by Ayana Townsend, and that goes into the stands and has now bounced back onto the floor. The crowd wants a foul. Jim Flannery wants a call. Nothing doing, though, and another block from Townsend. I just want an opportunity to see that block again because, my goodness, watch this swat. Whew. Clean block right out of bounds. My goodness, she didn't even hardly have to leave her feet there. The size advantage, Townsend at 6'2", Sar or Sarda coming in at 5'9". And what a, a night to remember for Ayana Townsend. It's been a good one for that part of the defense. And she has been a big reason why. Brodsky for three, a little long, and it's going to be tipped almost out of bounds, but a nice job there by Wasselson to save it. 7.40 to go. Dunham. 
Townsend. And a nice scoop shot there by Lion Decker. The fans wanted another travel called. They don't get it. I think a good no call there, and it's a three-point lead. And just moving, not moving her pivot foot. Rembau a little long, and another quick possession. A foul is going to be called on Brodsky, and it will go the other way. Well, and this is a game, Josh, I don't think either team, at least the way it's gone so far, either team is not going to be able to pull the way. So these fouls are crucial because Creighton already at four, so the next one is going to get Xavier at the line in a tight game. Those extra points could be huge. All Flannery can do is watch from the bench as his team now has four quick fouls. Three minutes now into the final quarter. Townsend picks up her dribble to Liondecker. Liondecker a long two, and that one falls, and it's a one-point lead for the great Blue Jays. Xavier doing this with Ari Gray on the bench, too. She's been on the bench for a couple of minutes, resting up for the, the final stretch here, and they're able to cut into the lead even with their best scorer on the bench. Rembao handing it off to Sarda. She is having a great night. She throws it, and they're going to call a kick ball on Aaliyah Dunham. And I think the Jays might have gotten away with one there, Rob. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I don't know that from our angle, at least, we couldn't see the kick. But more importantly, Sarda didn't see Dunham there because she threw it almost right into her bread basket. Rembao gets it into Brodsky. Brodsky driving in. She will be fouled. Shot almost falls. But she'll go to the line for a couple of shots. Well, you like the aggressiveness there from Brodsky attacking, even though she's not having a great shooting night. One for seven from the field for the sophomore from nearby here in Omaha, just outside of Omaha. There is Jalen Agnew, if you're just joining us, as the first free throw is up and good. The senior out of Kansas. She is out tonight, second straight game that she has missed. And we have seen here watching this one, Timmy Sarda really pick up a lot of the slack. 23 points, second free throw is no good. And the Jays are up by two. And we've seen just how much Agnew means to this team because the offense looks stagnant in some situations and the defense has struggled to stay in front sometimes. And Agnew does a great job at both of those for this Blue Jay squad. Dunham along the baseline. Over to Ross, and that shot is a little long and missed. Lion Decker, great job on the offensive glass. Another rebound by Townsend. The shot falls, and Xavier is a free throw away from retaking the lead. Well, size is a great thing, especially in this sport. And that six foot four and six foot two, Creighton doesn't have to doesn't have the bodies to match that out there right now. The tallest player they have on the floor is Carly Batchelor at six feet tall. And so the advantage in height alone is what has helped Xavier with those extra possessions and points. Misses, and she is able to get her own rebound. What a job by Townsend. A career night for her. Dunham puts up the two. She misses Sarda with the board as Brodsky goes down. And she looks okay running the other way. Well, you can tell the intensity, not just with the play on the court, but the fans really feeling the tenseness in this ball game. Sarda inside, lays it in. She has tied her career high, and more importantly, gives the Blue Jays a 51 to 49 lead. 5.32 to go here in Omaha, and the Blue Jays are up by two. We will have the final five and a half when we return. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic.
from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Demi Sarda, the junior out of Lakeville, Minnesota, tying her career high, 25 points on 9 of 20 shooting, including 4 of 5 from deep. Came into this one averaging just over 12 points per game. She has doubled that, and it has been huge tonight, Rob Sims, as Jalen Agnew misses her second consecutive game. Well, they needed every bit of those 25 points. In fact, she scored the last nine for the Blue Jays. The other thing to keep an eye on as Townsend kicks it out. Ross for three, that's a little long, and another foul is going to be called on the floor, and it'll go to the Blue Jays. Now Wasslison getting tangled up there, trying to gain positioning for that rebound. She gets whistled for the foul, so the third team foul on Xavier. Creighton already at five, so Xavier's shooting on the next Creighton foul. And keep an eye on those free throws. Xavier only 5 of 12 this evening. The Blue Jays 9 of 12 from the free throw line. And those have been so valuable as a reach and foul will be called there on Deja Ross, the junior. Well, and that illustrated the point that we had talked to Coach Flannery about this week, that Sarda is so fast. She's maybe not the best ball handler, according to Coach Flannery. She's playing at, being asked to play out of position at point guard, but her quickness and she's smart. And those are the two things, the two attributes that Coach Flannery talked about, why she can get away with sometimes not handling the ball as well because she is so fast and smart that she can make decisions like the one that she just made to get fouled and to make that last bucket that she made. And another foul is going to be called on the floor. So that's five now, right? So that's that's huge. Both teams now are going to be shooting free throws. You just mentioned those numbers. You don't want to get into a free throw shooting contest with the, the team that's ranked 13th in the nation in free throw shooting. Sarda will head to the line. She's three of three from the charity stripe this season and now has a career high with 26 points and gives the Blue Jays a three point edge with 457 left. 10 consecutive points for Sarda for the Blue Jays. And that one rims out so she misses her first free throw of the night. It's a three point lead. Ratsky on the bench took a shot and was talking to the doctors over there. Now Michael Parham trying to bring her size into this ball game and try to battle down low. Wasselson was trying to get it to Sarah Lyon Decker and it bounced off a couple of feet and it will stay with the Musketeers. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. And Josh, we, we didn't look at the record for Xavier and think this was going to be an easy win for Creighton and they seem to battle Creighton hard. Not a great matchup for Creighton. Gross inside and she will no, she will not go to the free throw line. A quick discussion between the two officials, and they decide that that is an offensive foul, and the Jays have it again. Well, I like the way they communicated, too, because neither of them called the blocker charge immediately. They both had it, the same call, but they wanted to make sure they were both going to agree with what they were calling. It was smart to, to talk about it first, though. And good chemistry that they can do so, I don't know, 20, 25 feet away from each other. 4.20 now to go at DJ Sokol. 
Rembao with the ball, looking inside to the freshman Parham. Parham lost it. Nice job there to take it away almost by Gray. And another foul is going to be called. A lot of contact there by Wasselson. She could have got called for the foul a couple seconds earlier when she bumped Tatum Rembao. Instead, she bumps her again and gets whistled. So Rembao at the line. And, and now I think what you will see, Josh, she went off for a little bit. So now she can still play these final four minutes maybe and still fall within that range of where she thought she would be limited to about 20 minutes. She's right about 18 right now. So going two minutes over what you were thought to <laughs> isn't terrible when, when Coach Flanner is used to playing some of his players 39 and 40 minutes. Rambau is 68% free throw shooter, misses both of those. And so it's still a three point edge. Coming up on four minutes to go. Four minutes on this Friday night. Creighton looking to move to five and three in conference play. Xavier trying to go to two and six. Gray lost it, and a late foul is going to be called on Carly Batchelor. She can't believe it. And now Ari Gray will head to the free throw line. Yeah, I'd like to see that again, too. Let's see where this foul comes in. She gets the tip there. Wow. I think the fans were uh, right to be a little upset here at home. She got the clean steal, and then it looked like inadvertently Gray and Bachelor got their arms tangled. If anything, it should have been a, a, a no call, but Gray misses the free throw. Both teams really struggling at the stripe now. You see the graphic there, a bevy of Blue Jays in foul trouble as this game nears its end. Second free throw is up, and that is missed as well, but it bounces around, and Gray is able to get her own rebound and hands it off to Aaliyah Dunham. Coach Flannery is furious with the offensive rebounds by Xavier tonight. That's happened a few times on free throws. We have seen a lot of second chance points. Here's Gray driving in, throws it up. Another offensive rebound, puts the second one up, and it's a one point game with three and a half to go. Ari Gray. Trying to step in front of Temi Sarda. You see Jim Flannery there. A little pressure put on here by Xavier. Now they back out of it. That was a little unique defense set up there as they brought the ball up the court. Give it up to the Musketeers battling incredibly well tonight. Inside to Bachelor. What a pass from the freshman Michael Borum. And another freshman, Carly Batchelor, puts up that two. How often do you think Mike Parham at six foot two in high school was lobbing a passing like that? I can guarantee you it wasn't happening. She was the one being fed, but that was such a great touch there by the rookie to her fellow rookie to finish because of the matchup that Batchelor had there. Parham, two assists now on the night, came into this one only averaging a half per game. And another foul is going to be called, and it's Blue Jay basketball. And Lion Decker whistled for the foul there as Batchelor grabbed the ball and started to head up court. Just happened to be in the way there and whistled for the infraction. What a hectic finish to this one. You see the turnover and then the foul on Lion Decker. And so Batchelor, who just had a tremendous layup after the excellent pass from Parham, she will head to the free throw line for a couple of more. Bachelor came into this one averaging 2.9 points per game. She is now up to 12, another career high. So a couple career highs in this one, Rob, for the Blue Jays with her and Temi Sarda. And again, not only a career high in points, she has equaled her career high with nine rebounds. So she's approaching a double-double. So a couple of freshmen looking to get their first double doubles of their career here in this ball game. Both free throws fall, two possession game, Jays up by five, two and a half to go. Townsend to Gray. Gray along the baseline is trying to get the ball to carry Gross, but instead it's taken away by the Blue Jays. 15th turnover for Xavier Gray, maybe trying to do a little too much there on that possession. Xavier averaged about 17 a game coming in. The Blue Jays pretty much right at nine, and they are both close to their averages. Here's Parham, coming upon two minutes to go. Temi Sarda driving. Here's a long three, and it is taken in by Bachelor. She puts it up, and the Jays have their largest lead of the game. I believe that shot was tipped, Rob, 
and Batchelor is able to get it, put it up, and it's 58-51. Either way, she was heads up enough to get it off because that initial shot didn't hit rim. And then Xavier comes back and answers right away. Excellent shot there by Carrie Gross, and it's a five-point lead. What an answer with the crowd standing on their feet. The Jays are going to be very happy to bleed time off the clock. A minute 25 left, 16 seconds left on the shot clock. If they bleed this thing down, there will be under a minute 10. Under a minute 10. Here's Elger, the lefty, looking for Bachelor. Instead out to Sarda. Sarda puts it up a little long, and a nice rebound there by Ari Gray. Minute five. Very quickly up the other end of the floor. Wasselson couldn't take it in, and it goes out of bounds with a minute and one second to go. Yeah, a little, maybe a little too much pace on that pass, which made it difficult for Wasselson to pull in. So another turnover. Creighton has really done a good job of taking advantage of these turnovers, too. 19 of their points have come directly from the 15 turnovers previous by Xavier. That might be the toughest turnover of the night, too, because they could have made it a one-possession game, two- or a three-point game, depending on what type of shot they look for. 50 seconds to go. The Jays, if they lead the clock all the way down, can get it to about 30, almost taken away by Gray. Bachelor has it now. Out to Elger. Elger inside to Brodsky. Another blocked shot, this time by Ori Gray. The ball's still on the ground. 35 seconds to go, Xavier has it. And another turnover. The Blue Jays take it away. That leads to a timeout by Jim Flannery. And at 29.7 seconds to go, the Jays fans are on their feet. Yeah, in crunch time, a young team trying to take care of the basketball. In a close game, you can see that inexperience coming to fruition here. Four turnovers in the last three minutes for Xavier. And that is putting the difference in this really tight ball game. Some conversations happening as you take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Creighton Blue Jays. They will be back here at home on Sunday before a three-game road swing as we go into DePaul Marquette in Providence. And Xavier finishing up their huddle on the other side of the court. There is Mel Moore, and you see their schedule. They are in the midst of a three-game road swing before they'll go back home for a couple. And great schedule. Doesn't get a whole lot easier. Butler's a very talented team coming in on Sunday and then hitting the road to play that really difficult Marquette DePaul road trip. Jays fans want a foul. They don't get one just yet, but that allows the Blue Jays to take a lot of time off the clock. Sarda still dribbling. No fouls just yet. And finally one by Aliyah Dunham on Tatum Rembao. And so she will go to the free throw line. She missed a couple about a minute and a half ago. And Rembao trying to get back into game shape. And you can see her, the sweat dripping off her brow there. And, you know, when you haven't played in a game, I mean, she's obviously been rehabbing. And Coach Flannery said she practiced well yesterday, really well. He was surprised at how well she practiced yesterday, just getting cleared to play this week. And with that big knee brace on her left knee, She's played some really, really important minutes, especially with Agnew on the bench. Huge free throw, and it's now a three-possession game, and that will lead to a timeout by Mel Moore. Rimbao, Rob, came into this one averaging 11 points per game, but obviously those were in the first month and a half of the season. Five points tonight for Rimbao. Played 22 minutes so far, one of six from the floor, including one of four from beyond the three-point line. And you could tell... The offense for Creighton is not back to where it's going to be when Tatum is completely healthy and, and she's running the point. And right now, they, the Blue Jays, for the most part, have had Temi Sarda running the point this evening. And you could see, obviously, missing Agnew on the offensive end, too, has really not set up nicely for them on offense. And you can see where they got stagnant sometimes, and Xavier's inside presence was able to frustrate them. But Sarda made those clutch baskets when she needed to and working Rembao into it you hope you know you don't know when Jalen Agnew is going to be back but you know that Rembao is working her way back in now and you 
just to have one game under your belt, see what she can bounce back and play in less than 48 hours on Sunday afternoon. 60 to 53 with 19 and a half to go. Speaking of Sunday afternoon, you see the games there. A couple on the Big East Digital Network. And a couple, one on Fox Sports 1, one on Fox Sports 2. Blue Jays back here, and that will be right here on the Big East Digital Network. 19 and a half to go. It is Xavier basketball. They need score, 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 and they need a couple of turnovers as well. If not, they need some missed free throws, but the clock continues to tick. Under 15 seconds, here's a three from Wasselson. That is missed. Gray with the board. She puts it up. Nice follow-up. And it is a five-point game once again. Bachelor has it, and the freshman from Topeka, Kansas, will head to the free throw line. Came into this one, 62% from the free throw line, and she is three of four tonight. 15 points, 10 rebounds. Now, speaking of playing really good minutes tonight, she's looking at 29 minutes in her first collegiate double-double. So, career highs. Miss Kansas basketball last year has a school record with better than 1,700 points and better than 900 rebounds there in Topeka. And she has really shined when they needed her to tonight. First free throw is good. And so still a two possession game right now. And this last free throw, if she makes this, that pretty much ices it. And she does. And that will lead to another timeout from Mel Moore. And that'll be a 30 second timeout after a couple of free throws from the freshman, Carly Batchelor. Watch this huddle too, uh, the, the camera we got on Coach Mel Moore. We talked to her earlier this week about, and obviously it's, the results haven't been there. So what do you, what do you work on? And you know, she's obviously working on establishing her program and what she wants it to look like. I've had, it, it's been fun to watch her coach tonight. You can see she's been really patient with her players teaching, you could see the teaching moments. Not getting frustrated at mistakes, but really just using that as a teaching moment. And so in her first head coaching gig here this season, obviously not going how she wants it to, but it's been, it's been fun watching her teach and coach on the sidelines in the midst of a, a, a rough, difficult season. Wasselson inbounds it to Gray. Gray with a long three. That one is missed. Bounces around a little bit. There will not be a foul, and the Blue Jays get a victory 62 to 55, and they move to 13 and 6 on the year as the Xavier Musketeers fall to 2 and 17. More to come when we return. Post game coverage coming up next on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Harford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science, occupational therapy, philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus, to the people, the sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? So we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. 
All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back to DJ Sokol Arena. The Blue Jays pick up a victory 62 to 55, move to 13 and 6 on the year, 5 and 3 in conference play. And right now we welcome Temi Sarda, player of the game, 26 points, 8 rebounds. Temi, congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Uh, talk about, I guess, that going into this game, didn't know for sure if you guys would have Jalen Agnew or not. When you found out that you wouldn't have her on the floor, did you perhaps take it upon yourself to, to have a game like you ended up having tonight? Um, you know, I think all of us knew that we were going to kind of have to play a little bit outside of ourselves, not too much. Um, we focused on playing within ourselves still, um, but it was definitely an adjustment, you know. Um, having one of your best players, if not our best, out, um, I mean, and finding out kind of right before game time, that's not something that you hope. But um, me personally, you know, I just tried to play my game. Carly Batchelor, I give a huge props to her. She really stepped up tonight, um, but so did everyone. Tatum's first game back, um, she had a great game, and then, Everyone else, just our bench had a lot of energy. Um, everyone that played tonight just did the little things, and I think that's what got us the win. Timmy, you jumped out to a great start. You scored 11 points in the first six minutes of the ball game. Kind of got out of rhythm there in the second quarter, but obviously exploded here in the second half and ended up with a career high. What were you able to do, adjust after halftime to get back into the flow of offense, you personally? Um, I just think our coach, Flan, he, um, he made some great play calls in the second half, I think. Um, all of us kind of just... I wouldn't say went rogue, but we kind of got outside of ourselves in the second quarter, and I think that kind of hurts a team like us. Um, so I'd say me personally, I really just focused on the little things, um, footwork, um, reading my defender, um, just doing the little things, finishing at the basket. I know we struggled with that in the second quarter. Um, and then just taking shots when I was open, and I, I think that was just the biggest thing. Let's talk about the defense because you guys had a lot of takeaways, especially in the second half, to get some of those extra possessions. What, what would you attribute the really good defensive play to? Um, you know, I think that charge that Carly Batchelor had, I think that was really a momentum play for us. Um, we had been making defensive plays the whole second half, uh, stepping it up from the first half at least. And I think that charge that she took really um, kind of instilled at us like, hey, like, let's just go the rest of the game. Like, let's keep doing this. Um, right after that, we got a few defensive steals too, so that was great. So I would just, I would give props to Carly again for that. Not just an offensive game for her, but a great defensive game too. We've talked to Jalen Agnew about this before too, but now you're filling up those minutes too, and you've played all 40 minutes in four of your last five games. <laughs> Does that start to take a toll on you? Do you start to feel that a little bit? Um, you know I do, especially at the beginning of the game, kind of just uh, getting back into that rhythm, getting your lungs ready. Um, but I try to do everything I can outside of basketball um, with recovery and in practice and whatnot to kind of be prepared for that, you know, especially with not having Dylan on the court. Um, that's definitely been a big difference, but a lot of it's mental too. I mean, just getting those little breaks um, when you can and staying um, just positive within yourself. I think that does a lot of it when you're not making shots and whatnot. But, you know, I just think um, pushing through, got to do what you got to do for the team. So. Tammy Sarda, 26 points, a career high, added eight rebounds as well. Most importantly, though, the Blue Jays pick up a victory, 62-55. to Tammy, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Blue Jays get the victory, and they move to 13-6 and on the season. Let's take a look at some of the other scores that ended up happening tonight. You see the finals in all four Big East games, including that one between numbers one and two in the conference standings, Rob DePaul, 85 to 69, they win, and now they are eight and zero in conference play. Yeah, and they're just starting to run away with the league, maybe a little bit. Creighton trying to do their part to stay in the in the race. 
Blue Jays do indeed continue to stay in the race. They move to five and three in conference play. Xavier, a tough loss. They fall to one and seven, but this is no ordinary one and seven conference team. Blue Jays pick up the victory 62 to 55 for our entire crew here in Omaha and my partner Rob Sims. I am Josh Peterson. Thank you so much and have a great Friday night.